Lately, I've been doing a little bit more of code development, and one thing I've come to realize is that when I'm working on the terminal, there's a few things I like to see displayed at all times. So for example, I use uh, Conda to manage my environments. So I want to be able to see which environment I'm in at all times. So if I do Conda activate test environment, for example, I want to be able to see I'm working on that one. I like to see my username displayed and the directory I'm working on. So if I change directories, I want to see that too. And lastly, I use uh, Git to manage my repository. So if I, if I go into a repository, I want to be able to see which branch I'm working on. So for example, I do Git checkout test branch. I want to be able to see I'm in that new branch now. So to my surprise, I, I couldn't find a straightforward way to do this online. I actually had to go and patch up different solutions. So what I want to do in this video is just go step by step on how to achieve this. So we're going to do this in three steps. First, we're going to modify how the Conda prompt settings are displayed. Then we're going to add this Git branch uh, to the prompt. And lastly, we're going to modify how the overall prompt looks like. So it, it's uh, to our liking. Okay, so first off, if you're not interested in all the details and all you want to do is just copy and paste the code needed to get this done, I have put together this document uh, uh, for which I'll post a link in the description below that uh, tells you the three steps you need to follow to uh, change your, your prompt to display both the Conda environment and the Git branch. Now, in the rest of this video, I'm just going to try to explain step-by-step uh, step what's happening in case you run into any issues and you might need to change some uh, parts of the of the code being used. Okay, so first off, let's go ahead and open a, a new terminal. And one of the things we need to make sure of is that uh, you're working on a C shell. So all the code uh, being used here is specifically for a C shell environment. So if you're a Mac, you probably can see it here on top of your terminal. If not, uh, you can always do a dollar sign shell and check the version. And if you see C shell here, that means you're good to go. Uh, the second thing we need to make sure of is that you already have Conda installed. So if you can see this base environment here, that probably means you already have it installed, but uh, you can also do uh, Conda and check its version. And if this throws an error, that means you don't have it installed. So go ahead and get that done before uh, proceeding with the video. All right. So with those two things ready, uh, the first thing we need to do is, as we mentioned, change the way the Conda environment is being displayed in the prompt. So I found a good resource for this in the Unix and Linux Stack Exchange. So I'll post a link in the description to, to this um, question as well. And if you scroll down to this first answer, the first thing they tell us to do is that we need to run this command that changes this variable change ps1 to false. So if we copy and paste that in our terminal. What you're going to see is that now in your root directory, you're going to have this conda rc file. And if you open that file, so let's just open it with uh, our Mac text editor. You can see that all that's been added there is this, this variable change ps1 to false. And what this is doing is just telling conda not to modify or change the way the prompt is displayed. So if, for example, now that I've run this, I, I, I open a new terminal, you can see here that our Conda environment is not being displayed anymore. And the reason we want to do this is because we want to have control over this and modify it ourselves. So even if I change here to another environment, let's say test environment here, uh, you can see that there's no error. We've, we've changed environments. It's just not being displayed in the prompt. So with that, the next step is to add this code to our Z shell RC file. So let's go ahead and copy that and then let's open that file. So let's do open with our text editor. So here in this file, you're going to see that there's already some commands uh, that were added during the Conda installation. And this is to make sure that Conda is working properly in your terminal. And then at the bottom of that, we can just add that code that is going to now modify the prompt uh, in the right way. So we're going to save that. And then if we go back to our terminal and do source, 
now we see that our prompt has changed. So now there's a couple of things here. So first off, we can see that now a uh, color has been added. But one of the things to highlight is that before we were in this base environment, and now it's displaying Anaconda 3. So let me go ahead and reopen this file, but I'm gonna open it now using VS Code just because it's a little bit easier to display, but you can you can do this in, in your text editor if you prefer. So let's go ahead and open the CSHRC file. Here, what we can see is that in the code we added, the first thing that happens is that it checks if this conda prefix value is equal to miniconda3. So this miniconda3 was a version of Anaconda this person had installed in their system. But because in our case, we have a full version of Anaconda, then this is not working correctly. So if you're not sure with ver version you have, you can always copy this and go to your terminal and do echo and that variable. And here we can see that what we have is Anaconda 3. So going back to that file, what we can do is change that for Anaconda and then save our uh, CSHRC file. And if we source it again, now we can see that the right environment is being displayed. So this code all is doing is checking if we're in our base environment. And if we are not to display this Anaconda 3, but to display this base. And if we are in any other environment, just display the name of that environment. Okay. Then the next thing we need to look into is this prompt variable. So this is what defines the way the prompt looks like. And here you can see that we're defining first some color and then that conda environment that we have assigned some value to. So here you can see that in, in this case, that's what we're getting here at the beginning. Then we're getting in green, this ampersand end is basically saying display the username. So here's our username in this case is Nabla. And, and then we're setting another color for our directory. And in this case, this number one represent the depth of the directory we want to show. So if I change this to two, it's not only going to show me the current directory, but its parent directory. So if I do this and then source that file and then switch to, let's say this directory right here, I can see now it's showing me uh, not only the, the directory streams, but also its parent directory. And if I change that back to one and source the file again, now you can see it's only showing me the current directory. Now, of course, there's a lot more into this and I'm not gonna go through all the details. So I'm gonna post a link to a really good YouTube video that, that explains this very well and tells you how to change the colors and modify the font to be, for example, bold or italic and so on. So you can check that out if you're interested in making it more customized. Okay, now that we have um, our Conda environment being displayed, our username and the folder, the next step that we need is to add the Git branch to it. And again, if you do a Google search on this, uh, you can find a lot of explanations on how to do this. The issue I was having is that every time I tried to implement that, it was overriding the Conda environment settings. So that's why we had to do the steps we just described first. And now to that, we're going to add the, the Git branch information. So I found this one in particular to be very straightforward. So I'll also post a link in the description below to it. So all we need to do is go back to our ZSHRC file and add this function and then call that function in our prompt variable. So if we just go back to our CHRC file and here we add this variable here, then we want to call this at the right location in our prompt. So here is where we're displaying our directory and then we want it right after that. So what we can do is let's say we define some other color. So let's say for example, uh, yellow, and then we're gonna call that function parse git branch. And then what we want to do here is use this ampersand F to reset 
the color so here we we specify that we want this to be in yellow but then everything after that we want it to be whatever color setting we have in our terminal as a, as a default so what this does is it resets that and uh, that's it so we can save this go back to our terminal source that file and then here we can see that uh, we're in this uh, streams folder and we're in the test branch and we can do uh, git checkout main for example and then we can see here that uh, it switch to that other one and we can do conda activate um, test environment and here we can see that it's, it's displaying properly all right and the last thing i'm going to do is just change the way these colors are displayed to my liking so here i'm just going to go back to that cshrc file and define some colors for what I want Conda to display, the default color that is just resetting to whatever set on the terminal, um, the color for my user and the, the color for the Git branches. And then I'm just assigning that to the prompt. And again, I'm going to uh, post a link in the description below on uh, how to do this and how to add like different types of fonts and so on. So the last thing I want to show is that if you see here, these colors are defined with just a single number. So that's a ANSI color scheme. So one thing I found very helpful was this uh, palette of colors, especially this uh, 256 one, which is what's available in, in this uh, Mac OS terminals. And here what you can do is actually play around with this bars for the your RGB colors and, and uh, try to find the right code for whatever color you're looking for. So now, you know, with this colors defined, if uh, we go back to this file, save it, go back to the terminal and source it, now you can see that it's displaying um, with the colors I, I, I like to use. Again, I hope this was helpful and let me know if you have any questions.